darkness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. gathered together this Sunday morning as a congregation to worship you. You are deserving of all of our praise, Lord. You are our Father in heaven, and you have also blessed us with the gift of fathers here on earth. Everything a father does for their children and their family comes from that blessing, especially the love and protection they provide. Thank you, Lord, for both our earthly fathers and you as our heavenly Father. Many of us here were raised by fathers who knew you, Lord. But we ask, Lord, that you are with those children whose fathers are not bringing them to you, Lord. Mm. Now, let us all join together in saying the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our, Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day, day our, our daily bread, bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Welcome to Shutesbury Community Church this morning, those who are here and those who are at home. We are so happy to have all of you with us and happy Father's Day to all of the fathers and all of the people who act as fathers, uh, which sometimes includes women. And so happy Father's Day to, to everybody today. We do have a few announcements. Tickets for Come and See next Saturday will be distributed during fellowship today. So if you know how many tickets you need, I will provide up to the 20 that I have. If we don't have enough, we'll go online, we'll get some more. We still have time to do that. And if you haven't made up your mind about going, you can get tickets online, although you have to get blocks of four. And to get fewer than four, you have to make a phone call to the box office. Um, so whoever's going and knows they're going and has a good sense of how many people are going with them, we'll do those tickets this morning. Uh, next Sunday <coughs> is the funeral for Peggy German right here at 1 p.m., followed by a um, committal service in the 
Eric Lawrence said the town cemetery, so I'm assuming that's the one down here. Uh, there are several in town, but I think that's the one where it's going to be. Everyone is invited. Ayers will be here, and Peggy's um, family will be here, and we are looking forward to seeing all of them and celebrating Peggy's life. She was a longtime member of this church. She was the granddaughter of a pastor, uh, spent a lot of her youth in the, in the old parsonage, and she certainly devoted a great deal of her life to this church. Jim Lake, our friend from the Gideons, who has preached here on a couple of occasions, passed away this past week. Sadly, um, he, as you know, had been failing for a while. Um, as soon as I know anything about the plans for a wake or a funeral or a celebration, I will share that with you. So he is celebrating Father's Day, as is Dwayne. Uh, and this is Dwayne's birthday month, so um, a tough one. But he is celebrating and with Jim Lake up in heaven right now. And so um, that's a wonderful thing that we get to know that. We have a church council meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock on Zoom. So I hope to see all the council members at that time. We do have a couple of important things that we need to decide at that time, or at least discuss. And it's birthday Sunday. Does anyone else have any other announcements besides birthday Sunday? Uh, Becky. The food pantry we did. Food pantry. This week I did. And it was 101. 101 pounds. We are doing wonderful, and this community is doing wonderful. I was over at the post office, um, not this past week, but the previous week, <clears throat> excuse me, and the box was packed. So it's wonderful that people are, are participating with us in that important mission of ours. So, all right, um, let's do our birthday song for Levi Haley. And Sandy Jean, is there anyone else with a June birthday? Here or not here? All right, well, we'll sing for Levi and Sandy. You do know that Levi is going to have another brother. Oh, really? Again? Oh, excellent. <laughs> of the year, a happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, and the best you have ever had. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you, may you have Jesus dear every day of the year, a happy I think our candles were a bit low on. Yes, so. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. A bit low on oil this morning. Um, then, since that's all we have for announcements, let us take our voices and songs and praise the Lord together. The choir can come forward. I lay down. 
God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding symbols. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake Till I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. When every breath that I of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In the darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. The goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing the goodness. Good 
darkness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. When my life lay down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good When every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing the goodness of God. Open up the sky
Lord, on this beautiful Father's Day, we are so thankful that you are our Lord of mercy, that you're our Lord of grace, that you're our Lord of love. And I really appreciate Johnny's um, words about not everybody grew up with a loving Christian father. So for many people, Father's Day is not a day of celebrating and having great memories. But Lord, the one thing I have learned through the years is no matter what people with ungodly fathers have endured is you are the ultimate father. You are our love and our salvation. And Lord, we can turn to you with broken hearts and broken spirits and have them renewed and repaired and able to rejoice. And so many people today, Lord God, with the state of the world and the chaos and the drama are living in a very unsettled world. And with you as our Father, we have that foundation. We have, may not be happy all the time, but we have joy and we have peace that you are always there, that we can always turn to you, that we will never be turned away, that we will always be heard and loved, and we will never be shunned by you for our doubts and for our fear that those are the times you want us to come to you in great earnest to seek the loving seat of the Father. And Lord, I know that you are the greatest love of my life. And I thank you for always being there. And Lord, it's with that confidence with you as our Father and our Lord and our Savior that we can come for you with our prayer requests, with our praises and our thanksgiving. And Lord, we just pray for your will to be done. This is a very chaotic time. For some reason, the year of an election is always more tumultuous than others with prices of different things and the stock market and the uncertainty of who will be the next president or will it be the current presidency. There's always so many changes and speculations that we live with and Lord, it can create a very tumultuous and unstable time. So Lord, we're praying for your peace to rule. We're praying for your peace in our country um, as we've seen numerous things that we that really were kind of unexpected. Riots and um, just a lot of things that were not what we thought would be bringing in this new year with. So Lord, we pray for this election. Lord, we pray that you would put the person in that you want in power. Because Lord, you have a plan. You have, you have this plan that needs to follow prophecy, that needs to follow the flow so that your will can be done. And Lord, we don't know if it's Republican or Democrat or Independent or who's going to be elected in, but we know that whoever it is, we still have you as our ultimate authority and that you can bring peace and chaos to this time of waiting and wondering. And Lord, we just pray that you will continue to be with our government at its state and town levels. Um, That Lord, you provide wisdom and guidance. Even if they're not seeking it, Lord, you can provide it. And you can change and touch the hearts of those that you want to hear your words and to follow. And Lord, we're so thankful that you are just such an amazing and loving God. And we pray for those that are traveling. We pray for those that are um, going through many different exciting things in their lives. Um, I am very thankful for 
my son out in Colorado, that he is um, just experiencing all sorts of different things. For my youngest son, who's experiencing fatherhood and expecting his second child in January, January, July, just for Mari and Gabe getting married in August and just all of these things that are going on in our lives that are just so exciting and just so full of joy and wonder. Um, we pray for da um, Peggy's daughter-in-law, daughter and son-in-law who are traveling to England and Germany. Like, how exciting is that? What an amazing time this is in their lives. And we just pray for those that are um, <clears throat> on new missions for you. And Lord, we just pray for those that are um, in a time of transition, like the Lake family who has lost their loved one. Lord, we just pray that you will be with them to fill their hearts with compassion and mercy and your love. Lord, we pray for um, Israel and the innocent Palestinians, Lord, who are in this, this time and this age and this place where their lives are being in total upheaval. And Lord, we just need you to protect and to love and to bring an end to this war. Lord, we pray for Jonna and the whole um, Mackenzie family as they have a new little one that they've um, brought into this world and is now with them. So a happy Father's Day to Johnny Mack, his first one. We pray for our community. We pray for our school here in Shutesbury. Um, Lord, we just pray for the students to just have a, a basic knowledge of you to reach them where they're at. And Lord, we just pray for your, your protection upon them as um, this world is just chaotic for all of our kids and our families. And Lord, we just pray for your love and your commitment to always endure. And we just thank you for your many blessings. And we love you, Jesus, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Uh, offering and so if Nancy would come forward and take up the offering um, I would like to remind those at home that uh, if you watch us on a regular basis you are part of our church and we would very much appreciate it if uh, you would send us an offering on occasion to help us with expenses and let us sing our offering song
please rise those who are able for the doxology. grateful for your great love, for your beneficence, for all the blessings that you bestow upon us each day. And Lord, we thank you that you are so much in our lives. As we give back a portion of the blessings you have given us today, we pray that they will be used for your will and to your glory here in this church, this community, and around the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we're going to conclude the book of Acts with our final part of our three-part movie series we've been watching. And then next week there will be a sermon wrapping up and talking about the importance of the book of Acts. And then the following week, we will begin our summer series. Now, I want to take just a moment to explain to you how that summer series is going to work. We are going to be taking a trip through the Bible from the very beginning when God created the earth. And as we follow our trip through the Bible, we're going to make little stops along the way. And we're going to revisit some of the children's stories that we learned as youths. Of course, they're usually one page or two, so that won't take up a, a sermon time. So we're going to explore into the, what those, those children's Bible studies are about beyond the little stories that we learned. We're going to learn more about the people who they're about, the lives that they lived, and uh, maybe some things we didn't know before about those people that the, that the stories are about. Um, as part of this, each week we will have one children's song. Uh, Becky's kids will come up, and I hope the choir will come up before the sermon each Sunday, and we'll sing that one song it won't be part of our regular worship time. Um, it'll just be a, a special little song before the service, just to bring us back to those times of our youth. And then we'll explore these stories as we go through. We'll talk about people, perhaps, and I'm not saying that we'll definitely do this because I haven't completed the list, but we may talk about Samson. We may talk about Ezekiel and his vision of the heavenly angel that comes in, in, in this frightening um, image of a carriage with many faces and many wheels, and various other stories like that. We may talk about how Ch Jesus uh, came with the little, ch got together with the little children, and why it's important that he said, that we must all be like little children, and so forth. So I'm really looking forward to this, and in 10 or 11 weeks, we should make it all the way through the Bible. Not every word, obviously, but uh, hitting the highlights of God's relationship with humankind from the very beginning of creation until what will be, someday, the end of creation as we know it. Now this morning, we're going to be watching the final episode of the movie about the uh, Acts of the Apostles, and it concludes what we know for sure about Paul's life. Um, as a lifelong writer, I can tell you that 
the, part, the hardest parts of anything that someone writes are the beginning and the end. Whether it be a newspaper story, a sermon, a letter, a book. As a journalist, which was my career for more than 30 years, as you know, we had sp workshops devoted just to how to write a good lead, we called it, which is the beginning, or how to write a good ending to a, to a news story. The beginning can make the di difference between whether someone reads or doesn't read what you've written. And the ending, of course, determines what kind of an impression you leave on the reader when they come away from the story, from the book, or whatnot. So they're both very important in having your writing be a positive experience to the reader. This week, as we come to the end of the book of Acts, we'll see that it ending, its ending leaves us wondering, wondering about what comes next for the church and what, what comes next for Paul. There are questions left unanswered. It's like, like a cliffhanger, kind of, at the end of a TV show. We'll talk about that next week before we put the book of Acts away and move on to our summer series. So this morning we're going to look at the final two chapters, chapter 27 and 28, and we'll see how Paul's ministry, at least how it's described in Acts, comes to an end. Of course, we don't know if indeed it came to an end at that time. Luke simply stops the story. And the thought is that Luke probably wrote his two books, the book of Luke and the book of Acts, during these last four years that are in the book of Acts, where Paul spends two years in jail in Caesarea and two years in house arrest in Rome. And Luke was with him for those four years. So it's thought that he and uh, Paul together, um, or Luke wrote, but with Paul providing him information, um, wrote these two books at that time. Last week we saw Paul beaten by the Jews in Jerusalem. He was rescued by the Roman soldiers who imprisoned him on false charges that were brought by the Jews. He then went through four different trials. The first was before the Sanhedrin, the ruling Council of the Jews. That broke down into violence, as you recall, and chaos, and he had to be rescued by the soldiers. Then Paul went into a trial before the Roman governor Felix. When Felix stepped down and Festus took his place, he went through another trial before the new governor Festus, and then he had kind of a hearing before King Agrippa. None of them found him guilty of anything, and yet he had appealed to Caesar as a Roman citizen, and so it was incumbent upon these Roman officials to send him to Rome to stand before Caesar. Now, you may recall that earlier in Acts, Paul had gotten a message that he would be going to Rome and so this ensured by saying, and I want to be appeal to Caesar, that he would follow Christ's command and go to Rome and whatever happened there, whatever Christ had planned. So this morning we're going to look at the trials and tribulations that Paul experienced and the successes during this 3,000 mile trip across the Mediterranean to the Roman Empire's capital city. I have a map that shows you what that trip entailed. On the right side of the map, he leaves from Caesarea and they work their way by ship over to Malta, that island just under uh, Sicily, the boot of Italy. And they have a shipwreck there. And then some months later, they finally are able to leave the island of Malta and continue on to Rome. And I want to read one key verse before we move into the movie. Acts 27, 5 to 11. 
when we had sailed across the open sea off the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There the centurion, that's the person who was in charge of the um, prisoners, found an Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving off Nidus. When the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to the Lee of Crete, opposite, opposite Salmoni. We moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens near the town of Lycia. Much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the Day of Atonement. So Paul warned them, men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. Isn't that so often the case that people who are in command follow their own guidance and not the guidance of others who may know better? And we'll see what happens as a result of that. So let's watch the movie with the movie slide one.
And so the book of Acts comes to an end. <clears throat> and you notice that wherever Paul went, <clears throat> excuse me, some believed and some did not believe and would not believe. And it's a sad thing that that is the case today. Some will, some won't. This is the importance of our come and see program next week and the importance of our being willing to share the gospel with people because some are ready and sadly some are not. The healing of the boy at the very end there um, was not indeed in the Bible um, but it's I think representative of what Paul did throughout his ministry so uh, I don't think it's uh, and. Um, an impossibility that indeed it happened. Let us conclude today with our final song, Our God. of the blind there's no one like you none like you into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you none like you our God is greater our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is
God is here. Awesome in power, our God, our God. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. God like God is greater, how God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, how God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, how God is greater, how God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, who God is healer, awesome in power, our God. Then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? What could stand against? Our God is greater. How God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. How God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. How God is greater, how God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. How God is healer, awesome in power, our stop us and if our God is with us then what can stand again and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us then what could stand again then what could stand Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And may you go in peace, carrying the love of Jesus in your heart and sharing it with all those whom you meet. We pray this in his holy name. Amen. And I am told by um, Chris that we have no water in the bathrooms.